What's up guys? Well, with the release of Sonic the Hedgehog 2 this past weekend, I figured it was a good time to talk about some of the best video game adaptations that we have gotten. And then I started to sit down and go, is there even 10 good ones? Yeah, so it's no secret to anybody that video game adaptations have not had uh, the best track record in the movie world. Uh, we have yet to really have the first great one. We've had some good ones. We've had some very solid ones, but we have not had one that's like transcended all of the other ones that have come before. We haven't had that Batman Begins or that X-Men 2000 or that Spider-Man, Sam Raimi. Like we haven't had one that's like, holy shit, this changes everything about what we thought this could be. But I feel like it's on the horizon. And if it's not video game movies, I feel like if nothing else, the Last of Us TV series that we're getting next year on HBO is going to change the landscape and they're gonna start looking at these video game properties and go, you know what? Probably stupid to keep trying to shove these into two hour run times. Let's just start doing limited series, but time will tell. But as for right now, let's talk about my top 10 video game movies. Coming in at number 10 is probably a controversial pick because this is not a movie that I hear talked about in a praiseworthy sense very often but I've always enjoyed it. Number 10 for me is Doom. Now, right off the bat, they totally fucked this story up. Doom is about the hell coming into Earth uh, on Mars and everything like that, and this movie takes more of like a viral approach. It's more like zombies and an infection, and yeah, that doesn't sit well with video game fans. But I will say, once you get over that initial hurdle, that it's still a pretty solid video game zombie movie, especially when you've got charismatic actors like The Rock and Carl Urban as your two leads. I really enjoyed seeing The Rock take that villainous turn. I think this was the first time that he played a villain, uh, except for Scorpion King, but I mean, we're not gonna talk about that one. But I really still dig this movie. You know, it's not great, it's not awesome cinema, it's not a movie that I rewatch all that often, but if I want a very video game styled zombie movie, I think that this one gets more right than it does wrong. And there's actually a pretty badass little first person shooter sequence that, uh, it's the only time I've seen that done really well in a movie, and it's been years since this came out. Number nine, going back to The Rock with Rampage. Now, this is a arcade game that I grew up playing. You know, we had like uh, restaurants and bar and grills and things like that in Ohio that always had little arcade standalone machines. And, you know, didn't really see too many of them after I moved down here to Savannah, Georgia, but I used to play House of the Dead 2 and Rampage and a couple others all the time throughout my childhood. You have the monkey, you've got the wolf, you've got the lizard, and you just beat the shit out of buildings. And that's essentially the whole thing. You climb up and just punch the shit out of windows and try to break down buildings. How the fuck are you gonna turn that into a video game movie? What story are you gonna wrap around that? They actually do a pretty decent job. Now, this is not, again, just like with Doom, it's not high cinema. This is not anything that's super compelling. You have The Rock, who is kind of an animal trainer, and he's best friends with this gorilla, and then there's this chemical compound that gets released that turns this gorilla into fucking King Kong. You've got a wolf that turns into this giant kaiju, and then by the end, they have to team up to take down this version of Godzilla. It's a kaiju movie, and I will contend that there's actually more entertainment value in this movie than in most of the MonsterVerse movies that we've gotten so far. So it's a film that you can just have fun with. It's a shut your brain off and just watch a bunch of giant monsters smash the shit out of the city type flick. And it's fun. Number eight is gonna be Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, thank God they redesigned this hedgehog because we all remember what those first trailers looked like. That thing was fucking scary. And this is one of the few times where the studios listened to the fans and the fans were right. They redesigned Sonic and this ended up being one of the more genuine surprises as far as video game movies. There's still some flaws here. I don't quite like the whole approach of taking Sonic and putting him in this live action, you know, suburban town and, and mixing, kind of like the Smurfs and all those other movies where you take digital characters and put them with humans. It just never seems to work all that well. It works better in this one than it does most times, but I still want to see that Sonic movie where he's in his own realm. He's in the Green Hill Zone doing the loop-de-loops, and we see pretty much a full CG world. I think we'll get there eventually, but this first movie, the character of Sonic is a lot of fun. They do nail the personality. The character of Dr. Robotnik with Jim Carrey is an absolute blast. You get that classic 90s style Jim Carrey, which is awesome. And 
Despite the fact that the road trip style does take away from a lot of the fun in the middle chunk of the movie, I think that it's bookended by some really good first and third acts, and my kids really do enjoy this one. So this is a game movie that I think appeals to the original fans of the video game while also appealing to modern generations of movie fans that maybe have never played the game. Number seven is going to be Silent Hill. Now this is one video game adaptation that I think genuinely captures the tone of the video games very well. I don't really understand why they swapped out some of the characters and made it the mom instead of the dad and just it felt like all the pieces were there to just adapt this video game 100% directly so I don't understand why they took creative liberties with it but nonetheless the story that we get about this mother that's taken her adoptive daughter across country to this town and then they crash and she wakes up in Silent Hill and you get all those classic elements from the video games where the bells go off and the hell, the hell world starts to take over Silent Hill and you get these different demonic entities and all the creature designs were really good. P pyramid heads in here for the first game instead of the second movie. So it, it's a video game movie that I think gets a lot right. It was so close to being perfection, but there's just certain things about this that just doesn't quite nail the disturbing psychological aspect of the games. And there's still, like I already said, a little bit of annoyance for me, and I think a lot of video game fans where they just decided to change shit for the sake of it, and I think they could have just done a direct adaptation. You had Sean Bean, just make Sean Bean the head of this movie. Change for change sake never really goes down well for me. Number six for me is by far the best of the Paul W.S. Anderson Resident Evil films, and that is Resident Evil Apocalypse. Now, I still contend that this is a pretty damn good movie. I know that his entire franchise, his entire interpretation of Resident Evil is shit on way more than it's praised, but for the entertainment value that his movies do provide, I think that this movie provides the most entertainment value, and I think it's the one that's the closest to the video games that it's trying to adapt. This one is kind of taking Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis and making one big movie out of it, and I think it succeeds pretty well. I think that Alice coming back is this more superhuman character. It makes her a more interesting presence in the movie than she was in the first film. I think that most of the characters that we get in this that are directly from the games, like Jill Valentine, like Carlos Oliveira, they're adapted pretty well, they're cast pretty well. I think that Nemesis looks awesome. And I think that the movie does balance a lot of that high octane action that they're trying to go for as opposed to the horror with some of the more traditional elements of the games like Project Nemesis and Stars and that whole storyline about Umbrella trying to cover everything up and then nuke the city. So I think this is still a pretty damn entertaining movie. I still rewatch re this one pretty often. And uh, ever since I first saw it in theaters, I've always thought it was a pretty damn good adaptation of the video games. Number five is just a little bit better than Apocalypse, and that is Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. This is a movie that came out just last year, and while it wasn't quite as awesome as I hoped that it was, it didn't deliver 100% on the promise that those trailers gave me, I still think it's a pretty damn good adaptation of the video games. It's the most faithful video game adaptation I think I've ever seen. It's the one movie that I can think of that said, you know what, general audiences, people that don't have any knowledge of these video games, newcomers, yeah, you're secondary this time. This is for the fans. This is for people that played that original game back in the 90s. This is for people that have been with this franchise for decades. This movie is for you. And there is some awesome things that come with that. And there's some flaws that come with that. I think that the best video game movie we're ever going to get is going to be the one that finally figures out how to balance both. How to give so much fan service and respect to the source material while making it new and accessible and something that new audiences can uncover and follow along with and not just be completely blind to all of the cool Easter eggs everywhere. And so this is a film that takes on the story of the first game and the second game, and that was the biggest mistake, I think. They should have just made a game based off of the Spencer Mansion, and then, if that's successful, then move on to the Raccoon Police Department. Trying to do both at the same time gives a lot of fan service, but it feels like both stories are just kind of fighting each other for screen time the entire movie. Beyond that, I like the casting of pretty much everybody in this movie for the most part. Some of them are absolutely perfect, some of them could have been better, but they still serve the characters pretty well. A lot of the creature designs, they're heavily CGI'd, but they're satisfying. You know, they're not something that looks terrible. You know, the, the, the big gigantic monster that comes out of Birkin at the end is about the farthest you can get from being 
awesome looking CGI, but everything else, the dogs, the liquors, they all look pretty good. And I think this movie genuinely has some good tension here and there. So it does capture mostly the tone of those first two games. This is a serious horror film. It's not trying to be action packed. It's not trying to be goofy. It's not trying to be like comic book flair like a lot of the Paul W.S. Andersons. This is trying to capture that B-movie tone that the video games went for early on and I think it succeeds more than it fails. Number four is going to be Mortal Kombat 2021, the one that we just got last year on HBO Max. Now, first of all, I did review this film and I was very excited for it and I think I was just in the right mood where this hit everything that I wanted. I reviewed it a little bit too highly. I think I gave it 4.75 out of 5. It's not quite that. <laughs> I need to retract that a little bit. It's like a four out of five movie. But uh, for me, as somebody that is a casual Mortal Kombat fan, as somebody that doesn't necessarily love fighting games, but when I do want to play one, I always reach for Mortal Kombat. And I have a very casual understanding of these characters, of the lore of this world. This movie, to me, was pretty damn awesome. I think that it captured a lot of that visceral violence that we loved from the original Mortal Kombat games with the fatalities and with the brutalities of the fights. I think that for the most part, all the characters are cast pretty well. I loved the rivalry and the setup between Sub-Zero and Scorpion, especially Scorpion. That's always been my favorite character in this world. And aside from the fact that we take a lot of time to focus on this new character that everybody hated, I thought he was okay. Um, it set up a movie that could have been the, the best Mortal Kombat movie. And it's still in production, so maybe we'll see that film. This is like leading up to the tournament. So this is almost like a prequel to the movie that we want to see. And with that bearing in mind, it doesn't quite get as epic as you would want a Mortal Kombat movie to be. But I think for what we get here, it's a good setup. It's a good start. It has a lot of the stylistic elements that we have wanted in a Mortal Kombat movie, namely the violence and I had a really good time with it. You know, it's a little stupid, it's a little silly here and there, that's why I needed to kind of taper back my review a bit. I think my excitement got a hold of me last year, but uh, it's still a really entertaining fighting movie and a really entertaining video game adaptation. Really quick guys, before I continue on in this ranking, I wanna let you know if you're not already aware, I have created a second channel. It's called Cody Leach Game Chamber. The link is down in the video description of every single one of my videos since I have created that channel. If you like video game reviews or live playthroughs or rankings regarding video games, that is where all of that content will be going forward. And tomorrow we're gonna be doing the top 10 videos video games that I want to see remade. So if you are here because you love video games as much as you do movies, definitely subscribe to Cody Leach Game Chamber down in the video description. And now, carrying on with the top 10 video game movies. Number three for me is gonna be Uncharted. You got a lot of movies from last year making this top 10. I'm telling you, we're heading that direction. We're gonna get that one here in the next couple of years. Now, first off, the casting is just, it's just wrong. Now, I love Tom Holland. I cannot root against this guy. I just love him so much and everything that he does. And he mostly succeeds as Nathan Drake. I still don't agree with doing a young Nathan Drake. I would have much preferred they'd gone somebody like Mark Wahlberg for Nathan Drake. But for the version that we get, I think Tom Holland does capture the role pretty well. Mark Wahlberg, despite the fact that I love this guy, absolutely miscast, horribly miscast as Sully. And he doesn't do anything with the character. I don't know if that was his choice or the director's choice. It's just Mark Wahlberg. There's nothing, there's no escapism into the role of Sully. With that out of the way, this is a movie that I think is a very fun adventure film. If you like movies like Indiana Jones, National Treasure, this is a movie that does capture a lot of those cool elements of those globe-trotting, treasure-hunting adventure films. And I think that it's just a really exciting movie to check out. It's huge, bombastic, it's over the top, which is right out of the video games. And I think that it was just a good time at the movies. If you can mentally get past the fact that this is not the most respectful, not the most, uh, not the most detailed adaptation of the first Uncharted game, which Hopefully they will mend that shit before we actually get the Drake's Fortune movie. If you can get past that, if you can dig that, if you can just kind of shut your brain off and say, okay, I'm not gonna go in here picking this thing apart, I think it's actually a pretty damn good time at the movies. Number two is gonna be Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Now, I actually debated on putting this at number one. Nostalgia is the only reason why I did not, because my number one's been a movie that I've been a fan of for decades. 
but this genuinely was a really good video game adaptation. It was genuinely a really good movie. It was a good time at the theater with my kids. I think that it improves on just about everything from the first film. Uh, I think that there's still some elements here that I wish that they would kind of pull back on, if not delete entirely for the third film, namely most if not all of the human characters. Focus on Sonic. Focus on Knuckles and Tails and Robotnik and all of that. That's what we're here to see. We don't really care about this wedding that's going on. That felt like uh, almost like a commercial break in the middle of the movie. But I think that Sonic is still a lot of fun. I loved Knuckles here and Idris Elba's voice acting and his take on the character. It's very similar to Drax where he just takes everything so literal and he thinks that he's so awesome and it's very comedic. Jim Carrey on fire again as Dr. Robotnik. If this is in fact his last film, good way to go out. Uh, brings everything full circle with his, his early career in the 90s, I think. Uh, Tails, again, he was awesome too. A lot of really good action sequences in here, a lot of exciting action sequences, a really good story and a good heart to the movie and a good message about rising to the occasion of being the hero when you're ready. And I, I like when a movie can bring a message like that and actually tell it in a good way. So I didn't really have a whole lot negative to say about this aside from just the detours going back to this wedding and doing uh, some, some juvenile humor, but you know, you gotta appeal to kids too, so I kinda get that too. There's some poop and fart jokes where I was like, I haven't laughed at that in like 25 years. You know, okay, maybe, maybe like seven years. But nonetheless, I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was a good time, and I'm really excited for the eventual Sonic the Hedgehog 3. But my number one, and I'm both like excited to talk about this movie because I've always loved it, I've always had guilty pleasure with it, but it's also depressing that it's still my number one is Mortal Kombat from the 90s. It's like, what, 1995, something like that. There's no reason why this should still be the best video game ever made. And I know that's debatable, but I, that's the popular answer, I think, is actually this movie, because despite the fact that it's dated as fuck, despite the fact that it is very low-hanging fruit, it, it's just very CGI and fight scenes and not a whole lot of character development and just a lot of you know, visual adaptation from the video games. I still think it's a damn good time. You know, I, I, this is a guilty pleasure in every sense of the word. On paper, this is not a good film, but I have always loved it, ever since I was a kid. I love the characters, I love the casting of all these characters. When I think of these characters, these are the versions that I think of. You got Robin Shao, who was in this. He was eventually in Beverly Hills Ninja, which I also love. You got Johnny Tsunami on here as uh, Shang Tsung, and I always kind of like battle, like which character is he in my head? It's between those two. The fight scenes are all pretty good. It's all hand-to-hand -hand stuff. Uh, I even like the way that they represent Sub-Zero and Scorpion. I think the effects for the mid-90s are pretty decent with how they do all of that. And I love the way that it eventually just builds up to this fight between Liu Kang and Shang Tsung. And I think that when that score kicks in, dun 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 dun, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you hate this movie, if you love this movie. When you hear that score, you're fucking pumped. You want to punch the person that's closest to you. Recognize 100%. This is a required nostalgia viewing. I don't think anybody could watch this movie for the first time today and tell you that it deserves to be on this list, let alone number one. But I have always loved this since I was a kid. I probably always will love it. Even if we get the most awesome, perfect Mortal Kombat movie in the sequel next year, the year after, whenever we get it, I'm probably always still going to be partial to this original one. Just nostalgia, baby. A powerful thing. So what do you guys think? What are your top 10 video game movies? Now, I'm sure our top fives are probably gonna be pretty similar, but the bottom fives are, it's probably gonna be a toss up. You're gonna get some odd ones in here. You're gonna get some Tomb Raider movies. You're probably gonna get a couple of Juve Bowl movies for some crazy people. Who knows? We're gonna get wild down in the comment section. So let me know what your top 10 is. If you guys enjoyed this video, not only like and share and subscribe on this channel, but be sure to check out the video description for the link to my other channel, Cody Leach Game Chamber, because tomorrow we're gonna be talking about top 10 video games that I want to see a remake of. All of my video game content is on that channel going forward, so if you're a fan of video games especially, go subscribe to that channel, please. Thank you guys for watching, as always, and remember, opinions are like assholes, but that doesn't mean that you have to be.